So testing for exit block. Um, remember, so this is just a post to your wall, just to orient you, right side of veins, left side of veins, post to your wall. Now I do this part again, I do this part when the part is on bypass, not arrested yet, after I've done my pulmonary vein isolations. So <clears throat> after eight sets of burning on the right side, you can test for, you can pace at both the superior vein and the inferior vein. Anything lateral to your lesion is fine. I check both veins. And again, with, your, the, with the HQ reps, if you have the OR lab, you, you open the pen, you pace, tell them to pace. If you don't get captured, you know you have exit block. Just to reiterate, you have to be in sinus rhythm at this time. I repeat it on the left side after I was on the left sided isolation, same way. Now, I'll do, I'll first, I'll, I won't, I'll do sensing and pacing at the same time. So first, I'll put the probe on and sense. And no matter what rhythm it is, you can sense and see if there are any atrial signals. So if there are atrial signals, I'll reablate at that time. With eight burns, almost never. Almost never, unless the atrium is super thick or super long where you're not exactly getting the toe sent across the veins. Almost never do I not get electrical isolation, both with entrance block and exit block on the veins with eight clamps. Then if I'm doing the epicardial technique for roof and floor, afterwards, I'll take the pen and I'll put it on the posterior atrium and I'll get, and I'll sense and I'll try to pace it. again. I'll try to pace only if they're in sinus rhythm. If I have electrical isolation of the posterior wall, then my box lesion's done. There's no more, there's no more roof and floor um, if I'm doing epicardial. If not, I will refreeze the top and bottom at two minutes each after arrest, arrested. So putting numbers to it, about 60% of the time, I have electrical isolation with two free, three minute freezes before I arrest. Another 20 to 30% of the time after the second set. Now you can't test again until the clamp's off and the heart's reperfused and beating again. So then I'll put the probe afterwards, after the clamp's off. And I usually do this even before I just start my right side of lesions, or if the heart hasn't started beating yet, as I've done, completed the right side of lesions to see if I got, have both entrance and exit block on the posterior wall. So if I do, then I just document it. And about 10 to 15% of the time, I don't get block after both of those. I don't really know what else you can do besides just document it and make sure that if that patient has recurrence, that you send them back for a catheter ablation down the road, and that's usually three to four months down the road. So again, these are the pacing sites. Testing for entrance block, just what I said, instead of pacing, is sense in these areas. So in general, if you get entrance block and exit block initially, you don't have to do anything else. If they're not, I'm sorry, if they're, if they're um, Said it opposite. If you don't get it, then you have to do some additional ablation. I told you the technique of how I did that um, in terms of floor lines. If you get exit block and entrance block interoperably, there's nothing else to do. That being said, confirmation of bidirectional does not mean that block's permanent. Just because you have full thickness lesions at the time doesn't mean they heal that way. Um, and but it, however, it's really important um, that the EPs for the EPs. They understand this and this is speaking their language.